but on degrowth. So there was a huge conference in Leipzig, 3,000 participants, and there were three workshops, only three workshops on businesses. I will show you what's that. And top of that, the three workshops, the um, facilitators didn't show up. So on the third workshop, it was always the same people that wanted to go to the workshop. In the third workshop, I was there with a the guy and we just looked at each other and thought, we're just going to run that thing now. <laughs> and it was a really good um, interactive, spontaneous session. And on that day, I decided, OK, I want to do something on the permaculture conference around that topic. So that's where I started a year ago. And here we are, squeezing into a little room. <laughs> Um, so before we start, I want, I would like to ask one or even two volunteers that would volunteer for documentation. Either, or want to take photos, I offer my camera with my holidays pictures on it, and um, another person writing down. Is there anybody who is... I'll write. You write? Yes. I'll take photos. Alright, let's go. Cool. You, um, I have paper here if you want. Do you want me to email or add Yeah, we can start that out there. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's seven to eight. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Mm, if you want to, you can try. I don't know if it makes any sense. Because, um, uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't need it, but if you need it, or if anybody else, does anybody want to have a voice recording? I think it's useful for other people okay. that aren't in the workshop. All right, great, yeah. Cool, lovely. Wonderful. So, um, yeah, that we did already two steps of the workshop. And, um, ta-da! The schedule, ladies and gentlemen. Um, roughly, it's maybe from the back, you can't see very well. So, um, we already, I told you why I'm doing this workshop. We got the documentation job done, and I also would like to have a mailing, mailing list. It's, I found it always very useful in sessions like that, that people can stay connected. So if anybody wants to take care of that, just basically passing around a piece of paper okay, with your name and your email list, and, and maybe your country, and if you are from an organization. OK, and now we are here presenting the schedule. So. Um, we're in the interface. We're shortly going to have a little session, just names and where you're from. We're not going to go deeply into that. Um, then I want to make a little experience line or snake in the room to know how, where you're standing in terms of permaculture and in terms of business experience. And um, the core part is we will look on a sustainability chart on what models and enterprises and movements exist that are already um, working in an alternative way on businesses. Doesn't necessarily have to be power culture, can be anything, just to have an overview of what is already there. And um, then we make a design experiment. You will find out about that later and in five groups. And we're going to present the results. And we only have 90 minutes <laughs> for the whole thing. And we have a closure time with a conclusion, a feedback. I would like to have a group picture in the end. And that's it. <laughs> Are you OK with that? Yeah. Yeah, OK, great. So let's go. So I would just suggest we make a little round. You just say your name, where you're from. You want to start? Sure. I'm Marco Morantes from California, general contractor and resident partner. Okay. Thanks. Hello, Lauren Landag from California, also from Culture Design International. Joshua from Cameroon. Mm -hmm. I'm a culture teacher mm -hmm. and a ruling council member for Gen Africa. Okay. Can, can you just stick just your name and your country? Because you will. There will be. Three sessions where you're going to talk to each other and just cause time. Thanks. My name is Heather Deep. I'm from Vancouver, Canada. Mm -hmm. My name is Luke Smith. I'm from Guildford, England. I'm Zara Bates. I'm from New York. Hannah Aprica from California. 
Darius Nonderoff from Edinburgh, Scotland. Mirko Kuk from Leipzig, Germany. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Becky Moon from Ashford and Kent. Sudan <laughs> Silver from Brighton in the UK. Ed Walter from Melbourne, Victoria. April Sensing uh, Kelly from London, Australia. Sikum Ruzo Sitebe from South Africa. Rosalind Jane Turner, Bristol, England. Delisa from Sweden, Uruguay. Connie Simon from Germany, Leipzig. Hello! Hello! Kev McAlpine from Sri Lanka. I'm Dina, I'm from Germany as well. Mike, Melbourne, and and Israel. Karen from Israel. Oliver Gardner from London, I work in PR and media. Great. Mevlin, I'm from the Netherlands. My name is Shashi, I'm from London. I'm Tommy, I'm from Alaska and Chile. Wow, I've never had such an international group. I'm so happy. <laughs> So great, um, and what I want you to do now, I don't exactly know how we're going to make this in this room, for, because for the next exercise you're going to have to stand up, and um, the first question to you is how, how uh, confident are you with um, business issues? Like for example, if you are the CEO of the World Bank, you go in that corner, and if you are somebody who always made a big going around the word business and now the first time in your life you enter into something that has business on the flag, you go in that corner and it's a group test, you're going to move around and see how you make it with the tables. So, one, two, three, go. Yeah, you can talk to each other and so on. So, You're over there, you got like 30 themselves because it will be useful for later when we make groups for the um, design experiment okay okay and the second question is how confident do you feel with permaculture if you think like I'm better than Bill Mollison you go there and if, if this is the first if maybe the IPC is for you the first event that you're ever attending that is around permaculture Go on that corner. Okay, one, two, Okay, so everybody found their space and is happy. You're happy with where you are? Yes. Okay, I've got a lot of people in the middle. Yes, for that. Okay, so also. Nobody in the corner. So also, yeah, have a, have a look around, see where people are. 
Is there, is there anybody who feels absolutely comfortable comfort with permaculture and business? Uh, I mean, small, small business. Yeah, yeah. All right. That, that, I can't do the two. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So it has to be brought at scale, right? at a certain scale. Sorry? <laughs> it has to be brought at a certain scale with a certain design. Yeah. yeah. But these things have to be thought up, but we're at, you know, we're the pioneers, right? <laughs> we, the royal we. Yes. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much. You can take back your seats. Look how hard. Now I'm going to do it. I'll have one to speak to your people. Okay. <laughs> Representatives. Oh. Do you have people? <laughs> I know. I must find people here. Amazing. It's got a lot. Okay, so that was the, the little starter. Maybe you had a little few seconds to chat to each other already. And um, now I would like to look into um, other movements, enterprises, like concrete examples or models or whatever they are that you know, that you not only read in a paper, but that you know that you have practiced, that maybe you experience yourself or that you're implementing yourself already, um, that are, that can be positioned here on this chart. So as you, I guess you're all very familiar with this, um, sustainability is ecological and economical and social. You can translate it to earth care, people care and fair share, which is basically the base of all sustainability theories. And um, so like what I am in my fantasy, I'm looking for something that's here. I haven't found it really in the, in the terms of business design. So um, you all have post-its on your tables and pens. So um, your job would be to take five minutes to think of things that you know. Of On the yellow paper, you write about movements that you know. I mentioned one already in the beginning. Um, on green paper, you write of enterprises, companies that you know, maybe you work in. There would be examples. On the pink one, you write models that you know. And on the orange one, things that you cannot really, you don't know if it's a model or enterprise or whatever. Write it on the orange one. And then you come here, well, probably the space problem here, but just to put it and position it on this chart. If, if you have a model that combines the economical and the ecological part, it has to go somewhere around here. If you have a model that's only on the ecological part, you put it here. So think about this <coughs> and where you can position it and um, where we see what we come up with. <laughs> Pink one is model, sorry. <coughs> Doesn't stick. Stick, don't sit, don't stick. Okay? Any questions? Yeah, yeah. But the enterprise, we don't have to know it exactly. Yeah, of course. If you if you heard about yeah, there it counts. You heard about it, yeah. <laughs> Just one per post it. One per post it, but you can. Um, yeah, come on. Oh. Um, we have any together? Are we doing it together or by ourselves? Sorry. Is it do for the team or is it together? You can, like, you do it individually, but you can talk with your team, it doesn't matter. We just want ma as many posters as possible. Everyone is familiar. Can we please have some examples? Okay, for example, I'll give you an example. Right. Models don't want to stick. Um, I think here, da da da. 
I think we made a stick at Bible for the same reason that we did this section of the church. Um, if I think, for example, um, I work with design thinking. It has nothing to do with permaculture in the first sense. But I would place design thinking as a model on the pink one. <laughs> I just write down DT. Design thinking is a, is a model. And for me, in my experience, it combines social and economical because it really brings people together as diverse as possible and they work together on solutions. So I'll put it here. Is this clear? Yes. Yeah? Okay. I, I have an example. May I ask where that would go? It's a food co-op and I would have thought it would do all three. Uh -huh. But uh, I must be missing. Do, do, does it have a particular name? Make it as concrete as possible. Make it as concrete as possible. Infinity food. Yeah, give us infinity food. Okay, write it down. Just throw it out there. And if you doubt if it fits, write it down.
Incubator model permaculture. <laughs> Nutira, industrial hemp movement, transition towns, okay, permaculture we have already, regenerative enterprise, eight forms of capital, weird roots, participatory guarantee, blush, regenesis, sikkim, and slow food. So these are all the things that you put in the middle. That's great. And for the second part now, um, I would like you to make groups that are as diverse as possible in terms of the two questions I asked in the beginning. So I do not want to have a table where there are all these people sitting that are really good in permaculture but not so good with business thinking. So can you check with your table? Maybe you can stay like that. Like but if you feel like you want to yeah. just change just your spot or whatever, you can do it now. and it's a suggestion, um, is that in these five groups now, <coughs> you're going to work on different tasks, and um, you have around 20 minutes for that. And um, one of them is to think, you're all going to get a paper, by the way, a big paper, and to think and brainstorm and really all of the groups just go out there in the creative space. There is no right, there is no wrong. Just go out there and be creative and um, let your ideas flow. So one question is, what does a, a business, a, a big business, look like that is designed based on permaculture principles? Okay, that's a rather broad question. In the beginning, I was thinking, oh, sure, I'll give you a challenge. And I thought, I don't know your backgrounds. So if there is someone on the table that has a specific um, knowledge of some enterprise or some company, use that. And I want you to think of concrete examples, but also on a, can be also on a very abstract level. 
but I think it's important to have both, to have concrete um, examples of how you're going to do it or what is already there. You can maybe just stick to one, I don't know, uh, department in your company or whatever, or also on, the, on a wider range, but just think of both. So that's one thing. And the other one, i just chosen some power culture principles because I would like to know what does it look like if you apply the principle of um, the edge principle? If, what does it look like if you apply that on a business? What does it look like if you apply the um, idea of multiple functions in a business? What does it look like if you apply the idea of multiple elements in a business and what happens with zoning? You are all familiar with these terms. If you are not, ask your power culture expert at your table. And, um, you know, I'm just going to give out these things. If you're not happy with it, swap with the group. Okay? So this is our yeah. 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 And, um, <laughs> did you have to discuss with them? Okay, and one more thing. So in multiple elements, then you have um, multiple, um, that, that you have many annual elements that fulfill one function, that own one function in permaculture. For example, like in your garden, you have, um, um, you, you want to, to uh, cool, you want to make a little, um, climate that's the cooler, so you, you have many kinds of machines that you can make a pond, you can make shade, these are already two elements that fulfill the function of cooling down the area. Yeah? And if you are not confident in this, you can think of any other power culture principle that you know of that you feel more comfortable with. Yeah? And I'm going to give you a paper for your final presentation. Yeah, the 
For example, we thought of yoga massage. You, can you explain? Uh, yoga massage, kind of like acro yoga, where both the client and the practitioner are benefiting. So it's a two for one. And if you're filming it while you're giving it, then you're making a video, making money, multiple functions all at once. And uh, impacts the practical outworking of this might be for a business to say to their staff who are part of the business process, we would like you to find multiple functions for what you're doing and to have suggestions. So you clearly identify what the business needs are and why you're doing admin or sales or something like that. Staff member or you might come up with, oh gosh, here's another function that could be fulfilled if we adjust the system in a certain way. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Just we still got one more minute. Oh, no, we're gone. <laughs> Who's next? Don't be shy. Should we go? Just to okay, sure. Right. Right. So, um, we had multiple elements, which we kind of couldn't figure out how to leave out functions, so we kind of tacked on functions as well. And we started with what a traditional business person might be looking at as elements of the business, and just spitballed um, within those elements what things they could include that would kind of have multiple functions. So we really started with um, reusable packaging. That was an easy one for us to think of. Um, having biodegradable 
or novelty packaging that you could then use again. Um, and then with infrastructure, we also kind of went off on that one, having sustainable design in there, but also having flexibility to use the space for multi-purpose or um, have um, relationships with other businesses that might be able to use the space as well or have community ownership of certain tools and infrastructure that you might need. Um, and then with logistics and people, we didn't really go too much into that, we didn't have time, but just having dynamic roles and having succession so that um, people can, um, you know, really use all their skill sets and, and with logistics, having relationships with suppliers um, and consumers that are, again, dynamic and um, just, yeah, serving multiple functions. Mm -hmm. And also going the other way that each, each function will have different elements. So we could draw lines, for example, gray water system in the infrastructure somehow leads towards helping produce the product or yeah. create, you know. So, with more time, we could go back, back the other way. Great. Cool. Thank you. Come on. Uh, well, also, can I just add something else? Oh, sorry. For a reusable product, um, if you're a creator, so the circular economy, so the Can you speak up a bit more for everyone? So, yeah, if you want to uh, create a product where the production line is fairly closed loop, it's always interesting to see three things, which is to see how much you can get back of the consumer, uh, what the best applications are, what the performance requirements need to be for, uh, to, to mitigate waste and to mitigate um, loss of material. Um, just, yeah, waste, which is basically um, money. Hmm. Anything more to add? Okay, so you can hand over to the next one. Oh, we'll jump up. Okay, great. You know, um, we, where's our topic? Our topic overall was a very broad one. We had, what does a permaculture <laughs> design business look like? So it's a kind of, how do you look at a business? We, we decided it was kind of hard to do it without putting in context. We thought we'd take a hotel, because that's at least kind of associated with a, well, a hotel. Um, and from this, we broke it down into areas that um, areas of interest. So first of all, we all agreed upon if it didn't, if it wasn't, if anything didn't go back to the three ethics, um, it wouldn't it wouldn't fall into a permaculture designed uh, business. Um, we had finances, we had uh, people going back again, back to people care, <coughs> the staff, the clients, the general population, the local community around it. Um, we looked into what would be the existing resources that you'd be around the hotel, um, cultural knowledge, uh, site requirements, um, the finances, so we spoke about the wage, um, the wage again going back into people care, bank and ethics, how would, what would you be um, basing your, your resources on, um, profit, um, how would we distribute our profit, now we go to, again, by always darting back to here, the profit was to build, we need to build a financially stable system, the business, but then spreading that profit um, back through earth care, fair share, and people care to keep that balance going, and always having that as a, a fundamental um, uh, below our below the business. Um, and again, again, a hotel looking into wider habitat. It was kind of just what we thought about it, just throwing out there all the different elements, um, techniques that we had, and just playing through them as kind of a, a blueprint map for any business would have to go through those things. Um, Bit of a hard task, wasn't the easy thing to do, but um, I think at least for most of us, that really played a key role in bringing and grounding us. I think you know it's very easy to start talking about all these profits in the environment, but unless you can be grounding it in okay, you're getting, you're getting an explosion amount of you know profit, where you're going to put it back into your staff, making sure you're not forgetting them, how they fit into that, how do they fit into the environmental scheme? So I guess that would be one for us. Any questions? <laughs> Any guys want to add anything? No? Thank you. Thank you. Go.
satisfy the three pillars of sustainability and get it to the end market ethically and while satisfying all those 
criteria. So we looked at various aspects of what, first of all, what is, how do we define this new type of product? Because it's not organic, it's not fair trade, it's what I personally have coined certified regeneratively grown, which might be a new certification, or ideally it's participatory certification, where it satisfies all the different criteria from water to social structures, the eight forms of capital as outlined by Ethan and Terragenesis. So we need to have some sort of metrics to define how these products satisfy the eight forms of capital and how they fit within that continuum of what we would call sustainability. So moving towards Joshua's example, we, Joshua coming from Cameroon, being a country that could supply product and does supply product to Lush, and looking at the challenges there in keeping the culture alive, making this cultural hybrid, and also in invigorating and inspiring the youth in that culture to stay and not, you know, go to the West and believe the myth that the West is the best or whatever that they see on TV, get the flashy, like everybody wants the new flashiest phone or whatever. So these rites of passages, so for the zone one, how do we cement that zone one so, the, so that the culture is intact and can, one, provide themselves, I have here in zone one, the subsistence level farming production for their community. And then there's the local economy that moving out from zone one to zone two being within the local region. And then the export economy, which would be zones three and four. So how do we, and then the zone five maybe is that supply chain, that slice of pizza that goes from the zone one to the zone four. And then the succession being, now you focus on your subsistence garden. And then once you've got your subsistence garden set up, then you can do the CSAs and the local economy, and then move towards the agroforestry systems that support the export economies once you have your house in order. Thank you. All right. That was a lot. How are you feeling? Huh? Good, good, yeah? Drink some water, huh, if there's still some left. <laughs> um, so we've got 15 more minutes. Um, so this is not much time, but I would like to open it up for some short comments, some um, things you want to say about this topic, about the workshop, about what happened here in this very short time. It's, I mean, this is, this is absolutely an experiment for me and maybe for you too. And it's at a very early stage and I think there are a lot of things that we need to look at that are not into permaculture, to look, to go beyond the edge of permaculture because there's amazing stuff going on out there already. So, um, yeah. supported by super plans and the curve is a bell curve and in the past the people in the middle would pay ten pounds a pop for the videos or CDs or whatever and now it's all going free and it's the super plans who are paying a thousand pounds or two hundred and fifty pounds for some specialist experience or deep experience. So 
there's also this discussion happening within the business realm as a whole of and tying in with the gift economy, which is being modeled by virtual economies like games and so forth, but it's percolating down to physical world products as well. It relates to the edge, because that is about finding a niche, and, and actually the whole business gets supported by a niche amount of super fans, yes. rather yes. than the mainstream yes. everyone's they really fan Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so we're doing this exercise and we're looking at how applying permaculture to the business world, it becomes a lot clearer that the future of business is collaborative as opposed to competitive. So we need to look at the, the, the nature of the relationships between enterprises within an ecology of enterprises and what the cu cumulative impact is upon society and the ecosystems in which those enterprises have, a, you know, have an impact. Mm -hmm. It's just, uh, yeah, sorry. Oh, well, I was just going to say, I. I appreciate your experiment here with us today. Mm -hmm. um, I really try to apply the permaculture design principle to everything I do in life, but especially with business consulting. Um, I was wondering, I mean, are there any others that you know? I mean, I know Ethan work, but just anybody else in the app? But I know it didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Does anybody else know of other resources and stuff that they're trying to I think work with Carol Sanford. Sorry? Carl Sanford. Carol Sanford. Carol Sanford. Yeah, doing awesome really wonderful work with the rest of the journey. Sorry, I can't hear you, Carlo. Carol Sanford. Do you want to write down here? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you're interested in the gift economy, then, then Terry Ray uh, is a lecturer in. Um, Sociology at University of New South, Newcastle, I think, and he has a lot of papers about the gift economy. How do you spell it? L A Y? L E A H Y. L E A H Y. And he has, he and his sister have uh, done that Chikukwa project film. So you can find Terry through various sources. And I think he's going to come up this weekend, but Mark Boyle as well. He's reading. Um, is it, I think what was the most nice he did it, it was, is it, he's not free cycle, but it was, it's basically, it's the reason money was money was spent, money was spent, but he's also got a gift economy on your website that people are swapping stuff all over the place. Um, for your point, for your what, how, how do you spell his name? So it's Mark, M-A-R-K-O-K. And then Boyle is B-O-Y-L-E. B-O-Y-L-E. Mark Boyle. 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 They are doing amazing stuff. They are mostly based in Amsterdam, and they want to turn I mean, a lot of vision, but they want to turn Amsterdam into a circular city. And the circular economy is something that's really good. They are. It's also a design discipline in the end. Yeah. I have, yeah. A, I have a recommendation more for like structuring organizations would be Frederick Lalu, reinventing organizations. Yeah. It's related to, it's <laughs> similar to like Holacracy, Tier 2, Teal organization. How do you spell the name? Uh, Frederick, it might just be with a C. I don't know, yeah, Google sure. it a little bit. Lalu is L-A-L-A-L-O-U-X, that's right, thanks. I'm ready for free, well, we're talking about That's right, yeah. I think it's L-O-U-X. Okay. I think also just um, I went to Rafter's presentation on how agroecology has kind of overlapping applications 
And I guess if you look at what business has already, within the business field, um, practices that they're already doing that they acknowledge as successful, but then how it can be um, framed with, the, with permaculture terminology. So I know there's a lot of research on green marketing or how people make value purchases and stuff like that, but then using permaculture to um, using those terms, but maybe putting the permaculture spin on Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I have a feeling that energy wise, like, yeah. uh, is there anything that really yeah. needs to be said? I can throw something quick. We actually, three of us were lucky, we, had, we did a session with Mark Shepard a few weeks ago. Um, and Mark recommended anyone, he looks into doing the business model canvas. If anyone knows that, he said he uses the business model canvas. And also, um, I think more people in the States, uh, the work of J.W. Mitten. If anyone's in J.W. Mitten. But uh, that's definitely not in the gifts economy. I think that's much more into a pretty heavy capitalist economy. But um, he recommended looking for those works, understanding, essentially understanding the game you're playing in, which is a very important thing for building businesses. Not only understanding the gifts economy and economies you want to transition to, but if you don't know what you're currently existing in, you can't transition out of it. But you can't play in it, so having understanding of that's quite important. Understanding the proper business models for the type of business you want to run. Exactly. And may I add to that, um, last month, one of, one of the girls that I work with, she's been uh, doing social enterprise workshops, and they talk about using the business model canvas, but with specific view uh, through the social enterprise lens. Um, I don't teach that, and I don't remember the person, but I'm sure we can track that down. Does anyone else know? What was the name of the business model canvas person? Oh, no, that was a guy who recommended it. Yeah, yeah, you find that uh, easy, yeah, you find that business model mm -hmm. yeah. I guess for me, what, I, what I'm looking for is exactly those kind of examples. Is Mark is referring to, I mean, how can we create a large enough agricultural system that would provide our money and not rely on design work, not rely, for me, yeah. I mean, personally, and not rely on you know, book selling or permaculture PDCs. How, how can I, as a young farmer who was standing pretty much furthest there in the business corner, um, can understand and take first steps in that world and become a creating a cooperative or enterprise and, yeah. and making my livelihood out of products that I grow and I believe in. Hmm. I guess that's what I'm looking for me and unfortunately I just Joel haven't Fanton found it besides Joel, Joel, Joel Fanton has heaps on that. I'm saying like in, in this context here. Oh, yeah. well, what, what scale are you talking? Market gardening, pasture, broad scale, I mean there's lots of different examples. Like, there's a guy in Canada, the market farmer, the yeah, market yeah. gardener. We, we work yeah, according to that role. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, Permaculture Voices podcast, he has a whole series on different business models mm -hmm. for um, urban farming, basically, small scale urban farming. Um, so I, I will take that as, as the last, okay? Yes, no, it's just to say, um, maybe if I get your email, my permaculture tutor, we have a, we have a, so my permaculture tutor, we've got a web page for all the, all the students, and this is something that keeps coming up, and she actually found um, an article for us on 10 different scales of successful permaculture businesses and I'm curious of how they got there but some gave more detail than others well, but that was, I just found it useful if you want. I mean part of the permaculture business model is diversification of income streams so to look at your farm as relying solely on the sales of produce is really putting all your eggs in one basket. So Mark himself does not rely entirely on his farm. All I'm saying is that for me it's very important not to leave, like where I work right now, most of the farms are educational farms. Yeah. So, and I am a big supporter of do what you preach. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. So I would, I, I'm, I'm totally aware that we just opened a big, I don't know, so we say we opened a big, whatever, but <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. And there is a lot to to talk about and. You, these people that you just met here, and I deliberately put you the tables like that, 
that you can connect. And I've seen the paper already walking, uh, going around with the um, <coughs> mailing list. Yeah. And um, I will, I will um, for the end, I would like to give me some feedback. Uh, I have some, like, each table can get some papers. And what I want to know from you is what are for you the outcomes of this workshop. And then you can choose either you just write me a feedback however you feel like, or if you want to use a method, you can tell me, okay, what are the things that you liked? What are the things that you wish for? And ideally, if you have a wish, you can also tell me how to, okay? So just take, not gonna take so long, but you all got hands on the table. Um, a few minutes to do that, and I'm happy to receive them. I'm gonna read them all, oh yeah. <laughs> and um, thank you very much for your participation. Everybody else is 